Let's go. Coming to you live from Music City, USA, it's the Nashville Casting Couch. I'm Chris Burks, along with your locally famous host, TJ Cates, who is in the invitation-only studio high atop the city overlooking everything that is Nashville Entertainment. Now lay back and enjoy the ride that we call the Nashville Casting Couch. <laughs> Casting Couch with Dana Lee Langford, the Barefoot Artist. Yay! Why do you call the Barefoot Artist? Well, obviously I'm wearing shoes today. That's where uh, the question came in. Yeah, that's that's a great segue. Um, actually, I got uh, the Barefoot Artist because I'm a former title holder. Yes, Miss Georgia. Miss Georgia, 1994. And uh, yeah, woof, woof, go dogs. Um, while I was out on the stage, they had introduced, obviously I'm a redhead, and uh, they brought out a bathing suit. We had to wear pantyhose and high heel shoes. And I looked at him and I said, that is not going to work. I'm an artist uh, and, uh, and I have red hair. I have white skin. I'm not wearing pantyhose and high heel shoes and a bathing suit. It's just wow, not going to look right. Wow, that's a lot right. of information. So I donned uh, the bare feet and went out and that's been my nickname for 20 years. Very the barefoot cool. artist, yeah. What is this stuff back here? Well, you know what? Uh, being a barefoot artist, I create visual arts. And uh, uh, my genre is actually folk art. And uh, I was mentored by the great and late Howard Finster, who is the grandfather of all folk art. And folk art is not your Grandma Moses type of art. It's actually a storytelling component uh, that I actually take big, huge pieces of plywood, different types of wood, use a jigsaw, bandsaw, and create imagery out of the wood. Uh, even the wood itself has a story. Sometimes I find wood uh, out at uh, salvage places. I pick it up. It's recycled, reclaimed. Everything that I do has a story to it. So I'm kind of like it's layered, just kind of like I'm layered as well. And uh, so... This is the easiest interview I've ever done in my life. Is it? Yeah, keep talking. Really? Yeah, just okay. keep going. Okay, well, well, hit the forward button. Uh, so moving right along, I was mentored by Howard Finster, who was a brilliant visionary. And he was from Georgia. He has been passed for about 20 years. And uh, he shared with me two things. And I think they've, they've left uh, a really prominent... Uh, uh, kind of a motto with me. And one of them, he said, you know, Dana, whatever you do in your life, he said, make sure that you share your story and whatever you're passionate about through the arts. And the second is do it through your children. So if you leave two legacies behind, do it through your art and do it through your children. And so I always make sure that if anything, one of the things, I always make sure that I paint and put visions and also words. And this is a great example. This is actually not on wood. This is actually Johnny Cash's hand sheeted I'll Fly Away music. And you can see the notes and all of oh, this on here. Look at that. And uh, uh, I've been painting for all the mo most of the local country music celebrities here in Nashville. I've been very, very fortunate. I've had many blessings. Uh, my artwork tours with Marty Stewart. I have over 70 pieces that travel with him in the Sparkle and Twang. I have uh, artwork in the Johnny Cash Museum, at the Country Music Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame, the Ogden Museum downtown uh, in New Orleans. And uh, right now, I just actually am now the new vice president of the Tennessee Art League. So pretty much my life is all things visual, and I like to put I'm a visual spin. Oh, would you like to do I would this? actually like okay. to ask a question about right about now. Okay. So you are, you're like me. You came to Nashville, and you don't really sing or play. You don't do music, but you found a way to attach yourself to people that do. I you think know what? Cool. It's really exciting. It wasn't a question. It was a statement. Well, it is, but it's true. I agree. I'm going to ask it in a question. Uh, the, my subject matter is musically themed. Uh, my subject matter is Southern themed. And uh, a lot of people can identify with that. And that makes it exciting and also makes it personal. So collectors that are out there, they can identify and go, uh, this is something very oh, look unique. At Elvis. Elvis, this is, 
I brought Elvis this today. This is birthday this week back home in my hometown of Memphis. And this is a picture and a portrait of Elvis, minus the wings of what he looked like when he was three years old. And uh, Howard Finster. Uh, could have been Elvis in like a Halloween costume when he was three years old. It could have been. It could have been Elvis as uh -huh. a scarecrow. Tupelo, Look at Yeah, Tupelo. Sure. Are you, are you doing little factoids here? Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. Good job. Okay, we like that. Factoid at the bottom. Tupelo. <laughs> Tupelo. All right. That's where he was born. Yeah, Tupelo. I, I, I got that. He only lived there for a year, and he was yeah. born, and he was a twin. Yeah, he did. And, uh, and We're going to have to have trivia. Okay, right? we Some can do time. it. Let's bring it. <laughs> okay. Well, let's tell people where they can find you real quick, and um, they can find you at the Art Crawl. They can definitely every Saturday at the Tennessee Art League at the Art Crawl. You can uh, locate and find my artwork at the Country Music Hall of Fame, the Tennessee State Museum. Uh, if you happen to be uh, hanging out with the, uh, in Cleveland to go over to the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame, uh, you can check out my Roy Orbison, my Willie Nelson, my Bee Gees, uh, and, and Johnny Cash. You know, um, I like the Johnny Cash ones. Yeah, it's they're fun. Hard. So thank you, thank right, you for thanks, having me here Dana. on the casting couch. I oh, mean, that sounds, it's, who would have thought a year ago? I, you never know. Say you never, you never know who you can meet here in this town. That's right. All right. Thank National you. Casting couch. Let's hear some music. Yay. This is TJ Cage with the uh, National Casting Couch here with Susie Monick. Did I pronounce it right? Yes, Monick. Monick. Okay, I, I have the most trouble like, with names. Like Harmonic. Harmonic. You could have said that when you came in. <laughs> it would have been easier. Okay, you have a lot of stuff over here with you. Yes. And I have something in my lap, so we have lots of things to cover. Okay. What is this? That's artwork. I make artwork out of clay, uh -huh. and um, I just started doing clay about maybe 20 years ago. I said, do what you know, so I would make little musicians, and that's a... Girl banjo player, which which you I are. am. We had the first all girl Is this band, you? Buffalo Gals. Yeah, that's me, and okay. that's actually that's a guy I made up in a book, a, a children's book about a little girl. Okay. Seeing a guy playing the banjo, and then she wants to play banjo. It's kind of so I do watercolors and clay. It's still like show and tell. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of like. Ask and a yesterday you came and brought your CD by. Uh, you came and brought your CD by yes. for Paula Williams. Well, you brought the book by for Paula Williams. Right. You're in a movie with her, so you're also an actress. Right. I've been what was the movie? Like, the movie I was in with Paula was called The Body Sculptor. Okay. And it's about a plastic surgeon. We were in uh, scenes on the tennis court. We were scenes at a funeral. They shot the funeral before we know what happened, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, like all movies. I and um, you also brought me a calendar. You're Miss September, which is my birthday month. Oh, great. Great. It was an all-girl banjo player calendar. I liked it. Somebody tried to steal it last night. I have a girl down the street we call Peppermint Patty, and she plays the banjo, she says, but I don't think. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But she tried to steal the banjo calendar. Wow. She's pretty jealous about it. Well, they don't have an accordion girl calendar because there aren't that many. Not that many accordions or accordion girls. Accordion, play accordion girl players, I would imagine. Okay. Well, um, let's talk about the, which one do you like best? Well, you like the clay, the clay. Do you like the accordion? You like the banjo? Oh, I, have, if you had to pick one, deserted island, you can take one thing. What are you gonna take? Well, I started out with the ban. I had a passion for the banjo. I just love the banjo, so I'd probably be my first. And if I was on a desert island, I could probably. Slice cheese and egg. it could be a slice or dice. You could, yeah, you could do lots of things. You could put it up and maybe trap some animals as they walk through the forest. <laughs> right, because it's pretty heavy. I don't want it to is. bang you in the head. But. Well, in a minute, we're going to play some music. I can tell you're already trying to get into it. <laughs> but my, I have my banjo teacher. I went to school in Syracuse University yeah. and Tom Church. It's like a drum, right? Snare. Yeah, it's a, it's a drum with strings. It's percussive, the strings. But um, I was kind of the first banjo student of. A guy named Tony Trishka, who now plays with Steve Martin, and Steve, Steve Martin can play the crap out of a banjo. Well, he had that passion. He had you. You kind of get a love for an instrument, and even though it's heavy, and it, it's like I just loved it. It's it's a kind of a happy sounding instrument, even though I play in a rock and it roll is. band with the banjo. I figured the banjo can do anything. It can. So. I like it. And the banjos are really coming back. Around all the places, I cover a lot of singer-songwriter nights for the Nashville Entertainment Weekly, and I love it when a banjo or a fiddle violin gets on the stage. It's something a little bit different. Well, I'm taking a violin. Are you really? like late, It's a, like a late life. Uh, Is it the same instrument? Or they just hold it differently? I don't it's know. It's like a mandolin I wish I wouldn't have asked that out friends. loud. No, yeah. violins are kind of a much... Um, 
people want to, you know, kind of kill you if they hear you playing it, practicing it bad. Where a banjo, you can kind of, it's an open key yeah, but instrument. It's you, you, really... you can make it sound better from the get-go. This is pretty old. Yeah, it's, um, it's 50s. Huh. All right, well, um, what are you going to play for us today? Well, I'm just going to... I'm going to get out of your way and you're okay, going to play. Yeah, I just I'm going to get out of your way and give you like the whole studio. Okay, I was going to I just wanted to ask you about the song you're going to play. Yeah. And did you write it? What it means to you? What your inspiration is to get into the banjo? I had a whole list of questions and you're just ready to play, man. Well, I, you're I'm ready to go. Play, I'm going to play um, a little bit of a traditional song and then I'm going to play a little bit of a blues song that I do with my band okay. called Money Talks, but it always says goodbye. Okay. So, um, All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, well, uh, we'll be right back, and Susie's <laughs> going to play on the banjo for us at the Nashville Casting Couch. Thank you. But I, I like to um, play banjo. I have a rock and roll band called Hollywood and the Extras, and this is an original that we do. Steve Martin always used to say the banjo, you'd think it's only happy stuff, like yeah, it's a real happy sounding instrument, but you can play the blues on it. So, so anyway, I love, I love the banjo. Let's go. Swagger. No, he ain't got that little cliff in his chin. He ain't no way better. Cause you're the baddest country boy, sweet to see. He ain't got my soft lips on him every morning. Now. 